microphone to you. Uh, Casey right here in front. Start us off. Matt, it really seemed like the offense picked up when Mason came in the game to uh, start in the first half. What did he provide today? I, I thought he was great. You know, his ability to space the court, you know, to be a plus 30 in 18 minutes is pretty hard to do. Um, but I thought he just made good decisions more than anything. You know, he didn't turn the basketball over. He took his threes when they came his way. Um, just moving the basketball more than anything offensively. And, uh, you know, obviously he's a great compliment to Zach and, and really gives us balance and spacing on the offensive end. Hey, Coach. That twenty seven two run, what was the difference maker that made that run possible? Right. You know, they, they do a great job. Two things. They do a great job of living in the paint offensively. They do a great job of turning you over. And we were able to handle their pressure at that time and then also keep them out of the paint. So when they're getting layups, as you saw in the second half, right? When you, they're getting back cut layups, they're getting 45 cut layups, they're driving the ball, getting their layups. And then they, they've struggled shooting the basketball. They can sprinkle in some threes with that. I thought we did a good job because I really think their success starts with their quickness and their ability to, to live in the paint. I thought we did a much better job of keeping the ball out of there. And then obviously we made shots. We made good decisions, simple decisions, and we made shots. That kind of segues into my question. Clary is probably the, one of the faster, quicker guards you've played this season. Can you assess in a real time how, how you did in terms of keeping him out of transition, but also keeping him in front of you? Yeah, you know, you're going to limit, if you can limit your turnovers and you can make shots, you're going to lessen somebody in transition. Um, but with him more of a team, you know, I, I thought Braden and Lance and uh, Ethan, but Ethan really played well, did some really good things for us, um, did a good job of gardening. And, you know, he's going to make some shots. He's a tough shot maker. But, you know, getting, I think he had 16, 14, what did he get? 16. 16. 16 on 16 shots. I think he would live with something like that when someone's getting that volume of shots. Um, but I, I thought our guys did a good job on him. Matt, Zach, on foul trouble with the last two games and his numbers can still average 12, 12 and a half points, 11 rebounds those two games. But right. we're used to more performances like tonight. Yeah. Uh, but he had 19 and 13, about a half. Um, does it impress you still when he's able to do this so, at a, such a consistent pace? Yeah, you know, just you know, having a nose for the basketball, you know, keep going to the glass, even when you're in crowded areas. Because I think when you keep moving and you keep going, now if they're grabbing you and holding you and kind of sandwiching you in there, you know, it's easier for the officials to see. But just being active, you know, we need him to be active going to the offensive glass, and we need him to dominate the defensive glass to start our break. But no, he's um, you know, he's obviously a special player, and but but he's also one of those guys that's if you've never faced him, he's he's hard to prepare for. You can watch him on film, but you don't realize how big and strong he is until you play against him. You guys only turned him over eight times, but got 21 pass break points. So, uh, what did you see there, and, and yeah, what impact did that make? Um, you know, not really. You know, really trying to with them the way you know Ace Baldwin and Claire are so fast. We were more just trying to keep them out of the paint. So I don't know what the game totals are, but I know at halftime they had you know more possessions out of the paint than they did in the paint. And so like that was more, especially if we switched some things and we had some tough matchups, we wanted to be able to get in those gaps and make it hard. Sometimes they empty out, and so there's not you know somebody high right there to help them um, in those. But then we just really talked about doing a good job of dribble containment and, and keeping them out of there and playing good team defense and staying with their shooters. Not as much as like, you want to have active hands, but you also want to, you know, understand when somebody is quicker than you, you know, you got to be smart. You got to be really smart. You want to, to get them out of rhythm. Coach, um, Caleb seemed like he had a good game today. Um, how have you kind of gone about kind of making sure that he stays involved this season? He's kind of the odd man out of the four, but you're still going to need him as the season goes on. Yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of tough. He's, you know, we've had different guys in that role to where when you look at minutes, you normally walk out of each game just saying, this guy deserves to play a little bit more, right? But, um, you know, we only have 80 minutes on our front line. So after, you know, Zach, you know, zaps 30 of them and you got three guys there with 50 minutes, like you can go and look at it. But you just kind of wait and see. Like before, I would kind of look at matchups and say, hey, this should be better than this. And the, College basketball is so screwy. 
it's better to kind of organically kind of just watch and then as you go through that first half um, just kind of see who's played better for whatever reason right like who's given you more uh, sometimes that's hard to quantify defensively um, you know with with analytics and stats like you know you just used to look at hard numbers and say you got eight rebounds and he got five rebounds so he rebounds better when in reality sometimes that guy that got five the team is a better rebounding team while he's in the game even though you've got three more all right so i'm not trying to blow your mind but that's what you want you know you just want to be better as a team so you know caleb's done some really good things for us but he ends up sometimes you know it's happened to mason before he's had 12 minutes it's happened to trey before and it's happened to, to caleb caleb's got a little bit more of that um but like he he stays with it he works hard he's got a good attitude and that's what we need from him and that's you know sometimes having depth everybody likes that right players don't always like that right they don't want depth they want to be one of the guys seven eight guys play and they play all the time and they know what they're getting every game but when you have depth sometimes it's like i always look back and say why didn't i play this guy more like i rarely look at a, a box score and say this guy played too much this guy played two less. I always am looking at stuff like that um, because you want to give yourself the best chance to win. Coach, how important was it getting this win against Penn State, especially after what happened with Nebraska on Tuesday? Yeah, you know, it's a lot of times when you get into that, in that mode, like you don't shoot the ball as well. You know, we make 13 threes, even though we take a lot of threes in that Nebraska game. They made some really tough shots. The thing that you know, I, I thought for us is we didn't make our own breaks in that Nebraska game. Like we would do good things. We just kept putting bad on top of good and good on top of bad. There was no consistency. We weren't awful, right? But we weren't good. Like we just were lukewarm and we just were there and make two shots, turn the ball over. You know, get two stops, turn the ball over. You know, have the ball in our hands, lose it. You know, let a guy get it, get a man one. You know, and so like when you're just, you know, find ways to win, right? Don't find ways to lose, find ways to win. And we just didn't have enough consistency in that game. And we had to be better defensively than we weren't. But with all that being said, I thought Nebraska was really good. And it's hard, like, you know, does that help us win this game? Sure. Does that help them lose the next game against Iowa? I don't know, I'm not in their locker room. But I know that's competitive basketball. Don't get too high and don't get too low. You know, try to be on the even keel. You gotta, you gotta have an edge when you win. All right, you got to have an understanding when you lose. Why did we, you know, why did we get beat? But just keep, you know, going. Like keep going and keep fighting. Don't don't look at things and, and, and get you know caught up. You know, like tonight we did a lot of good things, right? But the ball went in. We made shots, so that always makes it look better. If it doesn't go in, I looked at Nebraska's game like our Alabama game. We just outscored Alabama. That's all it was. We just outscored them. So we had to outscore Nebraska if that's the way we were going to be defensively. And that's what I try to tell those guys. Could we beat Alabama if the ball doesn't go in? I don't know. The ball went in that night. So you feel great and you're better than them. In reality, maybe we are, maybe we aren't. Yeah, so it's got touched on earlier, but obviously you've invested a lot throughout the offseason in Trey at the four. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes Mason's obviously coming in and giving you something, mm -hmm. and, you know, playing more, finishing games, things like that. Mm -hmm. When do you know? And what tells you in those first 10 minutes, whether it's trading under Mason's name? It doesn't always happen in the first 10 minutes. It can. Um, obviously, if this game was a closer game, Mason would have played more. All right, so I, I balance minutes when things get a little, get some distance. And, um, you know, uh, Trey was underneath the weather, and so he, him just going out there and playing, I thought was a, was a good sign for him. You know, he wouldn't say that, but like, you know, he's, you know, battling it, like a lot of people battle at this time of the year. Um, but no, just trying to gauge like, you know, what's best, you know, for us. And uh, obviously, you know, Mason was was best for us tonight. We went back to him, you know, more if the game was closer. You know, but we did, we are just trying to get everybody minutes. Uh, last one. Miles Guy, Guy from yeah. one today, he scored seven. Um, you know, it's been uneven for him. Um, did he show you anything today? Uh, anything that stuck out? He showed me that he's a good shot maker. <laughs> like, and that's not in question. You know, he's in a really tough spot. And once again, it's the depth of a team, right? It's, I mean, we've talked about it from day one, you know, trying to play 10 people and keeping 10 people involved. 
you're just not going to be able to, to do that every single night. And, uh, you know, he's learning and he's getting better. There's no doubt when you see him come in and to kind of have that short memory of using it right, just to come in and just, oh, I'm just going to stick this pull up. Then the ball swings back around to me. I want to shoot a three. Like, he's been sitting over there for 30 minutes. You know how hard that is? Like, that's hard. But he's, he's a good player. He's a talented player. Um, you know, with that being said, like, Ethan Morton comes in and really helps us. You know, his ability to guard really helps us. Cam comes in, sticks a three, guards, really helps us. Like, those minutes, like, three people are playing and two people need them, but they all deserve it, right? And that's a hard thing, but there's not enough there for them all. And that's, but he's kept a great attitude. Um, I didn't play him in the Illinois game. He played in the first half um, of Nebraska. He comes in and watches tape. He works on his game. Um, he's going to be a really good player for us. But no, he's a, you know, he's a guy that can put points on the board. Anything else?